having us up here. Uh, again, my name is Mark Creek. Um, I appreciate the New York reference. I'm originally from New York. I moved to South Dakota about six years ago. Um, living down on the Brooklyn Reservation ever since. Um, working with Redco on the food sovereignty initiative. And I'll let Ed introduce himself. Uh, I'm Ed Herbert Marches. I'm the garden manager at Redco Food Sovereignty Initiative. Um, I've been living on Rosebud for like three years almost now. Uh, originally I'm from Pine Ridge. Um, and yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk a little bit more <coughs> later in a little bit. All right, cool. So um, you guys got a packed agenda, so we're going to try and move through things relatively quickly. And for some reason, we're having uh, PowerPoint issues in terms of our, all our pictures coming up, which is kind of funny. But, um, we'll kind of just go through. So quick background, um, we're based with Redco, Rosebud Economic uh, Development Corporation on the Rosebud Reservation. Um, it's the economic development arm of the tribe. Um, they mostly do business enterprise development. Um, about five or so years ago, uh, the board, as well as tribal council, basically said, all this business stuff you guys do is awesome and we need that, but we also need all these other things, all this community development work. Um, and out of, uh, out of that kind of very broad directive to go do cool stuff, um, this is where the Food Sovereignty Initiative came from. Um, we started about four years ago in 2014. Um, and what I'm here to talk about today is our CCG agreement with NRCS and the project that we developed um, through that, which is called uh, Growing Food Sovereignty from the Ground Up. Um, so food sovereignty is, you know, kind of a, a little bit of a hot topic. Got to stop here and it work. Um, hot topic term, but it's basically kind of a, an enhanced version of local foods. It's not just growing food. It's also about the systems of, of food and, and how you are able to get food to your community. Who kind of controls the resources that gets food to your community. Um, which is important. Um, so, um, this is kind of just brief background. We do, uh, the Food Sovereignty Initiative kind of has a couple of big areas. We run a one acre incubator farm and garden. Um, we are the organizers of the farmer's market on Rosebud, um, as well as some other market developments. And we do traditional foods work, um, so kind of wild food gathering, buffalo harvests, etc. Um, this project particularly here, um, we were awarded three years ago, I believe in the first round of CCGs that came out. Kind of, We had a project previously with NRCS, we planted over 800 uh, fruit trees in one of the local communities on Rosebud. Community members basically said, we want our grandkids to eat well, so we need to plant trees, fruit trees specifically, native berries and others that'll be here for the next three generations. Um, so we went with NRCS and partnered, awesome project, really successful. Um, when CCG came out, um, Local Foods was on, on the RFP and we were kind of like, awesome, this is right up our alley. Um, I had never really seen that kind of language before from um, NRCS, so it was really helpful and, and uh, we welcomed that a lot. What Jeff was talking about before, um, in terms of CCG having a non-matching requirement was 100% essential for us as an organization to be able to apply and also really, and we'll get to the impact later on, but um, was the catalyst for us to have enough stability to launch all the things that we're doing now. The amount of growth we've seen since we've gotten this one opportunity, I think we've tripled our staff and programming output in the last three years. Actually the last two, we're entering our third year now. So we can try and have a good return on investment rate. <laughs> Um, basic, basic sort of tenets of the program, we're trying to increase local food production, increase consumption of local foods, and sort of build up the components of the system. So the people who produce it, the market pathway, you know, how do we leverage more dollars within our local economy um, on Rosebud, turn our dollars over as much as possible. Um, specifically where we're from, we're, and, and probably in South Dakota as, as a whole, we have a lot of leakage, a lot of money leaves to go elsewhere because there's not resources or or markets in our local area. I think rural South Dakota has that in general. Um, so this is something we find really important. 
Um, we're finishing this fall, uh, it's called the State of Food Sovereignty Report uh, for Rosebud, which will really lay out just exactly how many close to millions of dollars that we currently leak um, just in food purchases, not even with all the other amenities people need to buy. So we're trying to just capture as much of that locally as possible. Um, in terms of key aspects of the project, this is our garden right here, you know, for people who can see it on the right. Um, we have leverage that geothermal, uh, geodetic dome greenhouse, so it uses underground um, soil heating and cooling technologies uh, to, to remediate temperature. Um, and then we have uh, the high tunnel is actually rolling. It sits on a track and can move positions throughout the year so we can grow multiple crops uh, throughout the season. Um, so what we were trying to do in partnering here is to actually increase our actual production numbers. Since the start of this project, we've effectively doubled the amount of produce. We went from three to 6,000 um, in the first year, pounds of produce that we harvested. Um, this year we're creeping up uh, closer to closer to 70,500 by the end of the season. Um, the numbers doesn't say all, but we also grow about 40 or 50 varieties of crops. So we're not growing 7,000 pounds of pumpkins. We're growing tomatoes, lettuce, you know, bok choy, um, kale, snow peas, snap peas, you know, if you want it, we can grow it and we have grown it. Um, just trying to kind of have a diverse, uh, diversified small scale farm. We also do chickens. Um, and egg production, we also have beekeeping that we do out there as well. And this year we just incorporated some small scale fruit, um, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Um, I think I'm just a little trigger acid here every time I click it skips about six slides ahead. Um, anyway, I kind of memorized it. The other, the other one was um, the kind of next level of what we were looking to do was um, a lot of community engagement activities. So uh, a major part of what we wanted to do was Rosebud is this, you know, if you look at the size of Rosebud Reservation, it's one and a half times the size of the state of Rhode Island. That's how big our land mass is. Um, and the communities that we're trying to serve, um, about 30,000 people. So. Most of the services are centralized in the towns of Mission, which is where we're based, or, or Rosebud, um, which is where child services are. We have um, communities up to 40 miles away from our centers. So a big part of our thinking in this project was if we're really about food systems development, we need to go talk to all the people who are part of our food system. So each year, since the inception of the grant, we visited all 20 of the communities on Rosebud. Um, at least once a year, bringing in a meal and just sitting down with people and saying, what are the struggles that you have in accessing food? And also, what are the opportunities for you and your family if we were able to help you develop some sort of small enterprise based out of your house that was based around food? You know, what would that look like? Um, so we've spent the last two years doing that. We'll do that again this year, um, kind of visiting that. And, and all the stuff that we talk with people about will also be in our state of food sovereignty report, basically saying these are people's experiences. Here's the dollar numbers, but then here's what people's actual experiences are um, with the food system. Um, and then the last kind of big, um, the last kind of big piece that, that we wanted to touch on here was that um, from the original, uh, dollar amounts that we um, were able to leverage through this project. We currently have leveraged to date an additional three quarters of a million in grant and other support funding um, to expand our project. So the most recent one, which we couldn't talk about last time, but we can now, um, we were successfully awarded a beginning farm rancher grant um, through USDA. So we will be working over the next three years out of the space that CCG helped us to develop to train up to five or six tribal members in small scale food production, um, specifically with a focus of entering small scale ag as, as an enterprise, not just you know own gardens for fun, but to have major impact in our community food systems development. Um, we also, um, in addition to that, have hosted over 40 youth interns over the last two summers in the garden, 20 hours a week. Um, on a, on a sort of regular basis, and that's a big part of what I want to, you know, 
Edwin is going to talk about this a little bit, and he's got the best story, so I get to be quiet for a while. But um, the idea that if something is going to happen on the OS budget that's going to have a positive impact, then it has to be community led. So a big part of our focus has been how do we create opportunities for people to plug into some of the work and opportunities that we're creating. So I'm turning over to Ed just to talk about his story and his passion. And if I put you to sleep, I'll wake you up. A little bit of background about me. Like I said earlier, I am from Pine Ridge. Uh, Pine Ridge. Um, my mom is from there. I was born there. I was raised there. Uh, I moved over to Rosebud about three years ago with my brother. Um, I was kind of dropped out of dropped out of high school. wasn't really doing nothing. Just figured I'd move in with my brother and my grandma and uh, try to find a job doing something. Um, was very unsuccessful for about a year until I got my GED. And then uh, I had a cousin that worked with um, Mike. I can't remember what year that was. I think it was 2017. He worked up in the garden as a, one of our summer interns. So he, we went through the whole process. He took me to their office. I applied. I got the job. Um, and then I started off as a summer intern 2018 in June. And then uh, in about two weeks, I kind of uh, realized like this, I think so far like we had a week of rain and then a week of like actually doing stuff. And after that, I kind of decided that I loved what I was doing. Um, I thought the food work after a very passionate like presentation from Mike at our orientation, um, I thought about it a lot and I really loved doing the food work. like. At, the, or at that point, I was kind of into gardening. I kind of like being outside more than I like being inside. I'm very uh, introverted. <coughs> I don't like going outside too much. And I don't like being too social too much. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this job was a very big growth, personal growth for me. So you know, after some time, I talked to my and some other people about a year, like any other job opportunities that I could try to get on. And so, there was a position open for the AmeriCorps VISTA year-long volunteer internship, whatever. Um, so I did that, and you know I didn't know anything about office work. I thought I just thought I was going to be gardening eight to five. Uh, I was wrong. <laughs> uh, so that started in August 29th was when I started my. Uh, full-time position at Food Sovereignty Initiative. And I think about six months in before, no, I think it was either in January or I can't remember right now. It was a couple months in, but I decided, I told Mike that I wanted to take over the entire garden. Um, you know, after learning as much as I could, I just decided I'm gonna dive into this. Uh, I don't really like doing office work. Um, so I dove in, and uh, this summer was the first summer I called myself the garden manager. Um, I managed all the interns, told everyone what to do, um, did most of the planting, you know, all of that fun farm stuff. Um, and uh, the last day of my VISTA term was August 28th this year. So that was a year, and then right after, um, I was offered a job, a full-time paying job with benefits, uh, making real money. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know VISTAs, AmeriCorps get paid about $5 an hour, um, depending on where you live. Uh, but I was offered a job um, as the garden manager to run everything full time. And like during this entire process, it was insane to me that I didn't know, like growing food sovereignty from the ground up, sometimes when I like reflect on what I do, um, it was like growing food sovereignty from the ground up where I didn't care. I went from not caring about anything and just eating processed food to now, uh, this past week I was able to buy 
some sourdough, some jam, jams and jellies, uh, reds, raised, uh, grass fed, local beef, um, and some squash and watermelon from our vendors. And, uh, and like a year ago, I was just buying stuff from the grocery store and just eating that. So um, a little bit about our, uh, so that's like a little bit of backstory. Um, talk a little bit about our interns this year. Uh, like I said, this was our my first year managing anybody. So it was very scary, it was very hard. <coughs> um, but it was very fun to see like some of these, some of the people we had, most of them were at least, so I am 22 years old, I'm gonna be 23 in December. Um, most of them were about my age or younger, or most of them were just out of high school. Most of them were like coming back from a year, from their first or second year from college. Um, just like we had a lot of people that were like in college, coming back from college, or, or just around like young adult age. And it was very, uh, it was very great for me, um, just because I'm helping teach uh, people that are around my age. That always feels better for me, and it's always better for like when we host kids up in the garden when they see younger people, um, or people more towards their age, or people more towards maybe their older brother's age, or their sisters, cousins, um, whatever. Uh, but also, since they were my age, they also had some very similar attitudes that I had. And some of the times they were very mouthy, so sometimes I had to put my uh, boss foot down. <laughs> but it was a very, it was, it was a very good experience for me. The, um, we had them do a summer project, and it was whatever they were passionate about. We had them think on a level of. So we have different levels in our society of Lakota culture. There's Mie, which is yourself. There's Ti Oshpae, which is your immediate family, like mom, dad. Um, there's Ti Wahe, which is your extended family. And then there is Oyate, which is the nation. So in that project, we had those four levels. And at the end of this internship, which was about mid-August, we had them do a project of whatever they're um, passionate about. And it had to be on one of those, or it had to be on the Oyate level of what could they do, what do they have, what do they want to do that could make the uh, Oyate better? And the ideas and stuff that they had, the ideas that they shared with us, had me so fired up because they're all amazing and like I was ready right then and there to implement them. I didn't, I didn't care. <laughs> um, I still feel the same way. I still want to implement every single one of their ideas or help them <coughs> implement it uh, whatever way I can. Um, and there's just so much to talk about. Uh, Mike also talked about the beginning farmer rancher grant that we were awarded. Um, we came up, so our, uh, we have a new director now, his name is Matthew Wilson. We have another coworker that is coming on. Her name is Deanna Eaglefeather. She's our market manager. So me, Deanna, and Matthew, we sat down, and after our end mic, and then some other uh, DRA partners, um, we sat down and we decided to come up with a name. So the name for our like beginning farmer rancher classes is going to be like a farm beginnings type class, but we realized like. There's lots of processes to that. Um, too much to explain. Uh, don't really want to explain it. Some of those unpleasant. <laughs> um, but anyway, we came up with a name, and it is a Ichachya Ichachabi Kre, which means they will develop into producers. And it was actually one of our interns from Stanford that came up with our name. And um, and it fits very, uh, it fits like, I'm, it's a very nice name and I feel very good about that name because not like growing food sandwich from, from the ground up, we're just not gonna train farmers, but we're like, they will develop into producers. So it's whatever 
if they want to be like you know enterprises like salsa tinctures or i can't remember the word like they will produce something by the time they are done with this with our one year uh, classes so that uh, that name carries a lot of weight to it for us and so we are very happy and excited to go through the painful process of learning a lot of new things, but um, it'll be very worth it. Uh, this probably is kind of the wrap, so you guys can keep going with your meeting. When you, when you look at, well, first of all, I'll just say, Edwin makes the best budgets in our whole office, even though he hates office work. He makes the most detailed, very simple to understand budgets. So, that, so that's good uh, for as a director. I think when I, when I look at Edwin, I'm always very proud of him. And I think that that's something that, um, it makes me happy for our young people to be able to see that we have strong leadership and that this is what we hope for them as well. Um, that this isn't something that's gonna be a top-down um, program sort of, a program-driven movement. <coughs> this is gonna be community-led and especially our young people are the ones who are really taking this <coughs> and moving with it. Um, I always like to say too, um, we're not done, and we're not even close to done. So in the next five <laughs> years, um, we look to expand our garden from, from one to five acres. And our goal internally, and we'll just we'll say it for anyone, is we would like to be a regional leader in small scale food production. And that's what we're going for. We're not looking just to do cool things for ourselves, but we wanna push the envelope on what small scale food production and local food systems development looks like for the entire region. Um, <coughs> Also, just this year we launched, uh, in, in conjunction with our farmer's market, we launched a mobile market component um, and, are, and a feasibility study for a mobile grocery store. So basically trying to think about in rural communities, we need to start thinking innovatively about how we're getting food to people. Um, because traveling 40 miles round trip to the grocery store just isn't, isn't working um, for a lot of people. So I mean, I sort of break those barriers down. Um, yeah, and I guess just finally, you know, to, to kind of thank you for um, for taking the time to listen to us. I know, like hearing people introduce themselves, the angle we're coming at it is probably different than a lot of other people. Um, but I see, you know, at a base level, all of us got to eat, and we all want to eat good. We all want to feel full, and we want to be happy with tasty food, and that's really what we're doing. We want our communities to be healthy, we want our children to be healthy, and we want our land to be some of the ways that we're doing that are, are good. So thank you for taking the time to, to have us and you know we're happy to be here, honored to be here, we'll hang around if anyone wants to visit. If anyone has questions now, we'll be happy to answer them. Uh, one thing really quick, Mike said that uh, we think we can do some. Our mental, me and Matt's mentality is shifting to we will do it. Mm -hmm. There is nothing can, tried. Uh, we're either gonna do it or we won't. So our grant was a $520,000 grant over three years um, that leveraged three full-time positions and one part-time position that leveraged all the supplies and growth up at the garden, um, as well as we have a lot of passion and usually a little resources, so we take a penny and turn it into $10. Um, so that's kind of what, you know, what the impact of that, but that was the initial award.